The adjusting entries for merchandisers are basically the same as those for service firms, with the exception of adjusting the inventory account. This is a problem for periodic merchandisers because the unadjusted trial balance for inventory is the prior month's ending balance. Additionally, cost of goods sold is zero. The solution to this problem is using something we call the cost of goods sold model, which, is, which basically adjusts the inventory account and closes uh, purchases to cost of goods sold. The cost of goods sold model is beginning inventory plus net purchases equals the cost of goods available for sale. This represents all the inventory we could sell. From that we subtract the ending inventory to arrive at costs of goods sold. Ending inventory is determined by a physical count of inventory. This needs to be done each time uh, inventory is adjusted and costs of goods sold is recorded. Beginning inventory is the prior period's ending inventory. Net purchases are calculate, calculated by taking purchases minus purchase returns and allowances minus purchase discounts plus freight in. Let's look at an example. Assume the following uh, account balances. Let's plug those into the cost of goods sold model and calculate costs of goods sold. Purchases of $50,000 minus purchase returns and allowance of $2,000, minus purchase discounts of $1,000, plus freight in of $5,000 equals net purchases of $52,000. Now we'll take the beginning inventory of $20,500 plus the net purchases of $52,000, and that equals our costs of goods available for sale of $72,500. From that, we subtract ending inventory of $19,000 and arrive at cost of goods sold of $53,500. So that's the calculation. Let's put that into an adjusting entry. The adjusting entry that results from using the cost of goods sold model is a doozy. Let's break it down in simpler terms. We need to close all of the purchase accounts. So, purchase returns and allowances and purchase discounts, which have normal credit balances, are closed with debits. Purchases and freight in have normal debit balances, so they are closed with credits. Costs of goods sold needs to be recorded, so let's debit that amount. Finally, beginning inventory needs to be replaced by, uh, by, uh, with ending inventory. So we will debit ending inventory and credit beginning inventory. And with some accounting magic, that whole journal entry balances. This is the more appropriate way to make the, uh, make the entry. We don't actually have accounts called beginning in inventory and ending inventory. So we would just credit the inventory account of uh, $1,500 to reduce the balance from uh, $20,500 to $19,000. That prior uh, entry was more to aid you with the conceptual understanding. This is how it's actually done. The closing entries for merchandisers are the same as for service firms, except that we have some new temporary accounts that must be included in the closing process. Sales returns and allowances, sales discounts, and costs of goods sold all have normal debit balances. They get closed with credits and are included in the expenses closing entry. Revenues get closed with debits uh, to, revenue, to revenue accounts and credits to income summary. Expenses and contra revenue accounts get closed with credits and income summary is debited. An income summary has a balance of 10000 uh, and it's a credit balance, so we would close that with a debit and retained earnings is credited for $10,000. Finally, dividends is closed with a credit and a debit to retained earnings.